Telephone right now, the Secretary of State in West Virginia, Mac Warner. Mac, good morning, sir. Good morning. Can you hear me okay? Yes, I can. How do you, are you hearing us okay? Yeah, everything's good. All right, excellent. Hey, I'm, I'm wanting to push everybody who's listening to consider being a poll worker for us. Uh, we're getting some reports from uh, some county clerks who could use some more uh, poll workers for this upcoming November 5th election. So that's what I wanted to talk about this morning. All right, let's talk about that. I know in Berkeley County, the job pays 300 bucks for the day. I think uh, we had uh, County Clerk Tony Petrucci in last week, and he said, I believe the hours are somewhere around 530 to 730. So it's a full day, but uh, they all got a raise in pay, as I said, $300 for the day. Uh, Mac, what do you have to know? What do you have to do to be qualified to be a poll worker? You have to be a registered voter. So typically that's 18 years old, uh, be registered in the county. And uh, it's easy. You can go right to the county clerk at this point and let them know. You can get on their website, give them a call, stop by the office. Uh, you can get on our website. Uh, it's govotewv.com. That's the state uh, website, Secretary of State's website. And then we'll pass that information along. We have a big tab that says be a poll worker. You can simply click on that, fill out the information. Um, and the key to this, poll workers are really where the rubber meets the road in elections. It's why we have such high confidence in West Virginia in our elections is because these poll workers do a great job. They know the community. They know the people who are coming in. Um, and when you get them from both opposing parties, and that's typically Republican and Democrat, but it's also Libertarian, Green, Mountain Party, it, it doesn't matter, an independent, it doesn't matter what party you are, uh, but let the county clerk know, and the county clerk will arrange it so we have people from opposing parties at the precinct to make sure that everything's kosher and uh, things are being done correctly. So, uh, and the other thing is if you've ever complained yourself or had questions about election integrity or had somebody uh, say that, oh, these elections, my vote doesn't count or they're rigged, go be a poll worker. And you'll reassure yourself and be able to reassure your community that things are being done correctly. There are checks and balances. There's no better way to participate in American democracy than to be a poll worker. Bill? Uh, good morning, uh, Mac. Uh, Mac, uh, is West Virginia suffering at all in terms of poll workers with some of the negative publicity we've seen coming out of Georgia and Arizona and other states? No, we haven't had the threats to poll workers or any of the complaints. Really, things are going well in West Virginia, and typically the, the, the clerks pull this out at the last minute. Uh, we, we've never really been short poll workers, but we've been very close, and, and that's why right now it's nice to get that push to get enough poll workers uh, on the list and trained. That's part of the key to this is some of the trainings in these counties starts next week, and that's why we're talking about this today is uh, there's still time to go sign up, Get the training so you understand the equipment, you understand the process, uh, you're comfortable with it yourself. We have videos, we have the, the clerks that do the in-person training. Uh, so the, the answer to your question is no, we haven't had the concerns here in the state that other states have had. We're just being proactive, getting out in front of this to make sure that everything's good to go on November 5th. Are there certain uh, counties in the state that are having more difficulty recruiting poll workers than others? We, we do. We have a list of about 10 counties that uh, have shown an interest. I, I've been getting around and talking to the county clerks, and the ones that I've uh, gotten to uh, say everything's in good shape, but uh, I have had some phone calls from some clerks that said they could use some more, and that's why we're doing this public service announcement uh, blitz to, to, to ask for volunteers. And as we said, it's a volunteer, but you do get paid for it. Uh, it it's a good day. Uh, typically, people bring in potluck lunches and get pizzas, and it becomes a social event in most precincts around the state. Uh, there are those dry spells during the, de the day when folks are not coming in to vote, and uh, you get to just connect with uh, your neighbors, and it's a good time. Uh Mac, I'm going to ask a question that I don't know anything about at all. I'm looking at one of our uh, contributors on the um, Facebook, and it says, ask you about the House Concurrent Resolution 203, which says West Virginia legislators shall not recognize an illegitimate presidential election. Are you familiar with this, and what, what's the background on that? I, I'm vaguely familiar with it, uh, and I think it's well-intentioned that, that there are concerns in other states about uh, certifying elections when you've had people, say, perhaps uh, illegal aliens registered to vote and perhaps voting. 
uh, mail-in ballots that are a concern or uh, harvesting. I think this is an effort to um, question or throw out the uh, the concern that these other states need to get their stuff together. They need to run their elections like West Virginia does, and that is uh, follow the laws that the legislature has prescribed. So um, I, I don't think it's a necessary thing here in West Virginia to pass that, but I don't fault the legislators who are putting that forth to uh, uh, basically throw out a, uh, a concern to the rest of the nation that they need to follow the laws that are are written and uh, don't get outside the, the the boundaries. That's what happened in the 2020 election, which causes us still concern today, is with the ballot harvesting, with the drop boxes, with um, people voting, uh, not having signatures on the on the absentee ballots and so forth. We, we need to get back to an election day, people voting in person. That's the most secure form of voting, which is why we're making this plea for poll workers is to make sure that our polls, our precincts are manned properly with people who are trained. Uh, that's how you get the most secure uh, elections. Uh, election integrity is maintained with that. So uh, it's a long answer to your question. I don't fault them for doing it. I don't think it's necessary in, in West Virginia, but that's up to the legislature. Do all counties in West Virginia use a drop box? No, we don't. We don't use drop boxes. No, no counties use drop boxes. No, there were some in the 2020 election that put a drop box inside the courthouse. Uh, this was because of COVID to keep that distance. Uh, but we have uh, encouraged to not use that. You, you, the law says you're to, to drop it off to a person, to the county clerk or a person in the county clerk's office. And so we intend to maintain the integrity of the uh, legislature that uh, said this is how elections should be run in West Virginia. Secretary of State Mac Warner, our guest here on the program. Mac, what's a good ratio of poll workers to registered voters at a typical precinct? Well, the law is five poll workers per precinct. So you're expected to have at least two from opposing parties. Um, and so the requirement by state law is five per, uh, uh, per precinct. So it's not really in relationship to the voters. It's uh, per precinct. And so we have about 1,700 precincts in the state, five uh, poll workers per precinct. So it's over 8,000 poll workers that are needed throughout the state. Is five the minimum? Can you have 10 there in a given day, or does it have to be the exact number of five? You, you can't have more. That's up to the county clerk, uh, depending on how busy that precinct might be, uh, whether um, they're expected. Hey, we, we passed the, the law uh, a couple of years ago where – you could actually do half days. Uh, somebody would say a husband and wife, a husband could work in the morning and a wife in the afternoon, uh, that sort of thing. Not too many people have taken advantage of that, uh, but that's a possibility. So obviously during that switch over time, uh, you might have more than five in there. But it's five is the minimum. It's not a maximum. The pay is up to the county commission, the county clerk, to determine. And in Berkeley County, that's $300. How does that stack up around the state, Mac? Do you have any idea? The 300 is really good. That's on the upper end of things. You all did a, a nice move to uh, make that available for the people there in Berkeley County. I think about 250 is probably the average, um, and it's not much less than 250 uh, in any of the in any of the counties. So uh, that that is a county commission decision, and you all are probably leading the state uh, with that, or, or up there tied with the, with. The, top in the state. You've trimmed a lot of dead wood off of the voter registration rolls since taking office, Mac. Is that something you continue to do each year, or was that an early push that you needed to do to pick up the lists a bit? Well, it, it, it's both, and it's really the county clerks. I've simply been a facilitator. We've helped. We, we've gotten the information to them that they need. Uh, I haven't removed one person myself it's, or my office. It's the county clerks. We simply provide the information say, death rolls or um, people that have moved using the Postal Service. We've simply been a facilitator. So that is an ongoing thing. It's just there were so many uh, when I came into office that had not been removed over an eight-year period uh, prior to my taking over. That's why we had there was such a large push early on. Uh, but now it's an ongoing thing. The clerks are well-trained. They're the ones who want to get this cleaned up. There's nothing valuable that comes out of a bloated voter roll, somebody that's died or moved or a convicted felon. Nothing good happens with those excess names. In fact, that's where the potential for, for fraud comes in. So we've cleaned that up. Uh, the voter confidence is shot sky high here in West Virginia. We've 
Uh, we're using the best equipment in the nation. Uh, the process is uh, down pat with our audits. The county commissions do a great job with that. And as we mentioned before, don't use the drop boxes. Don't do the ballot harvesting uh, in excess of what the state law. The state law, by the way, says you, you, you can take yours and one other ballot. You can take two ballots into your county clerk. And that's intended for a husband and wife situation. Uh, but you can't take in 10 absentee ballots. You can't go to a nursing home or somewhere and pick up 30 uh, ballots and take it in. And that's illegal. And if somebody knows that that's happening, please report it to us so we can investigate and uh, get that stopped. And if I am in a nursing home or some other particular uh, issue is uh, to the point where I can't get to the precinct, what can I do to vote? Well, you can request an absentee ballot. You can request up to six days prior to the uh, election and, and ask for an absentee ballot. Um, we have, if you can only drive through but you can't get out of your car, you can request and the poll workers, one from each party, will go out and take you the ballot to the car. Um, if you have a certain disability that keeps you from voting in person, our legislature has allowed people to vote electronically on a mobile device, say a computer or an iPhone. That is available. You simply apply for that the same way you would apply for a absentee ballot. So uh, we've made it as easy as possible for people to vote here in West Virginia. And you can go to our website for all that information or call your county clerk. They are the ones who can uh, – identify specifically where you live and what is the best way to get you your ballot. Mac, thank you very much. I appreciate your time this morning. Absolutely. Great being with you. Always good to talk to you all. Good to talk, good to, talk to you, Mac. Thanks for your accessibility.